Today in this video, I want to quickly talk about a particular type of question called case studies in Microsoft Azure AZ104 exam. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. A lot of Azure Cloud learners and our viewers have been constantly asking us about the case studies in AZ104. This is one type of question that haunts many of us. Undoubtedly, they are one of the toughest and really tests your actual practical work knowledge on the subject. Before directly jumping on one of the sample case studies, let's first quickly talk about what is AZ104. This is especially for those who are new to the Azure certification and may be thinking to directly jump on to the AZ104. I will also give you other exam details like how many questions to expect, duration of the exam, fees of the certification and much more. And then I will briefly tell you about the other type of questions other than the case studies that you should expect in AZ104 certification exam. So let's start with understanding what is AZ104. AZ104 is for those IT professionals who want to become Azure administrators or Azure solution architect. In order to become Azure Solution Architect, you must clear AZ305. But before you attempt AZ305, you must first pass AZ104. So you can say that AZ104 is the halfway through the journey to become Azure Solution Architect. Now, as you can read, Microsoft says that candidates for this exam should have subject matter expertise in implementing, managing and monitoring an organization's Microsoft Azure environment, including virtual network, storage, compute, identity, security, and governance. This clearly means that Microsoft here is not just testing you on your theoretical knowledge, but also on the real working experience. Now here in the second paragraph, you can understand the job duties of Azure administrator. So this one says that an Azure administrator often serves as a part of a larger team dedicated to implementing an organization's cloud infrastructure. Azure administrator also coordinate with other roles to deliver Azure networking, security, database, application development and DevOps solutions. Further, it says that candidates for this exam should be familiar with operating systems, networking, servers and virtualization. In addition, professionals in this role should have experience using PowerShell, Azure CLI, Azure Portal, Azure Resource Manager templates, which are also called ARM templates. Moving on, here is the very important news on AZ104. Here you can see that the English version of this exam was updated on July 28, 2022. The passing score for this exam is 700. And if you scroll a little bit more, you can see the option to schedule the exam. Also note the fees for this exam is 165 USD and this amount is based on the country or the region in which the exam is proctored. If you take another country, let's take India. And now you can see the change in amount. Now it is 4800 Indian rupees. Besides that, you can also note what are the skills measured in this section of the documentation, which again reminds you about the changes in this exam. And please note the skills measured, manage Azure identities and governance, implement and manage storage, deploy and manage Azure compute resources, configure and manage virtual networking, monitor and manage Azure resources. And also please note the percentage for each of the skills measured. Now let's understand what are the different types of questions other than the case studies that you should expect in this AZ104 exam. And then I will come back to this documentation again to show you the sample case studies. Now let's understand the exam duration and the question format that you can expect in AZ104. This is the Microsoft page that talks about exam duration and question type. Not only for AZ104, if you want details on any other exam like fundamentals or expert level, then also you can refer this page. I will share the link for this page in the description box below. So let's first understand how many questions can you expect in this exam certificate. Microsoft says that most of the exam certificate typically contains 40 to 60 questions. However, the number can vary depending on the exam. Moving on, we are talking about AZ104, which is an associate level exam. So these are the two sections that relates to us. Please mind that there are two things that Microsoft says. 
One is associate an expert role level based exam without labs and associate an expert role based exam that may contain labs. If you want to understand what does that mean, you can read this section here, which is marked by two stars. It says that because labs can be removed at any time due to Azure outages, bandwidth issues, etc. Microsoft does not provide a list of exams with labs. When you register for the exam, you will be provided with exam time. When you launch the exam, carefully review the overview page that provide information about what to expect on exam, including if labs are available. So keep this important point in mind. Now let's also read out the exam duration. So without lab, we have an exam duration of 100 minutes and the seat time is 120 minutes. Then if it contains lab, then the exam duration would be 120 minutes and the seat time would be 140 minutes. Now let's check out what are the different questions that you can expect in AZ104. So here are the sample of the question that Microsoft has given. And the good part is that Microsoft has explained each type of question with a supporting video. So you can see that we have active screen type of question. We have best answer and then we have build a list case studies. Then you also have drag and drop hot area questions, multiple choice question, repeated answer choices, short answer. Then you have labs, mark review, and then you have review screen. So each type of question is well explained by Microsoft by a supporting video. So come on to this page and understand what are the different kind of questions that you should expect in AZ104. It's fairly important to understand this different format of questions so that you are not surprised when you're giving the exam. You have a feel of questions when you are sitting for the exam. So really recommended that you come on this page and read more about the format of the questions. Now that you understand how many questions should you expect, what is the time duration and what are the different type of questions, let's now concentrate on case studies. Once again, I'm here on the same documentation and for the case studies, let me scroll back a little and here under the tip section, you can see there is one section that says that view free sample questions to help prepare for this exam. Please click on this one. And this will open a new page where you can see more insights on type of questions. You can already see multiple type of questions. We have already discussed that. So I will not talk about these anymore. Then I will scroll and keep scrolling until I will reach to a section which is called case study. So let's read this out and get a feel of case studies. Let's read the overview. It says that Contusor Limited is a consulting company. The company has a main office in Vancouver and branch offices in Seattle and New York. Here you can see we have information on existing environment and the case study tells you that Contuso has two subscription named Contuso Sub 1 and Contuso Sub 2. The Contuso Sub 1 has the resource group shown in the following table. You can see that we have resource group 1 which also has a lock which is called lock 1 and it is a read only type of lock. The location is West US. Then moving on, you can read more details. Resource group 1 contains the resources as shown in the following table. We have disk 1 and we also have virtual network. You can also observe type, tag, IP address space and location for each resource. Then we have details given for Contoso Sub 2, which is the second subscription. And here we can see we have resource group, which is called resource group 2 with lock name called lock 2 and the lock type is delete and the region is East US. Then I will scroll a little bit more. Now here you can see that resource group 2 contains following resources. We have disk 2, VNet 2, which is a virtual network. You can read all the details. And then it says that the Contoso has a Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com that contains the user account shown in the following table. Here you can see in this table, we have admin one who is domain name administrator. Please pay attention to this section because the question relates to this section and the office for admin one is Vancouver. Then we have admin two who is user administrator with office in Vancouver again. Then we have admin three who is help desk administrator and then we have user one which is not applicable. So basically the role is not given. Similar case is for user two. 
Let's scroll down a little bit more and here we can read about Azure storage environment information. We have Contoso storage one, we have two, three and four and you can also read the kind of storage for each of them. Then what we are given in the case study is the recovery service. So here we have RSV1, RSV2 and RSV3. Now let's understand what is the problem statement. The problem statement says that administrators share Contoso storage 2 access key with external users and the replication costs for backup are over budget. And then further on, you can also read the requirements. What are the plan changes? What are the technical requirements and what are the security requirements? Now let's come down to the question. The question is in the form of multiple choice. The question is asking you that which administrator can implement the plan changes for the new employees and the options given are option A is admin 1, option B is admin 2, option C is admin 3 and then option D is admin 1 and admin 2, the option E is admin 1 and admin 3. So please read the question very carefully. It says that which administrator can implement the plan changes and here Microsoft has also given us the answer and logic for the answer. So here you can see that Microsoft says that the answer for this question is option B which is admin 2. The rationale Microsoft gives is that to bulk create users in Azure AD administration portal you must be signed in as global administrator or user administrator. Only admin 2 has a user administrator to perform this task. And as we saw in the question above, admin 1 was domain name administrator and certainly domain name administrator is not eligible to create users in Azure AD administration portal. Thus the correct answer is user administrator. In case you want to read more on the users and how to add bulk users, you can read this documentation given here, which gives you all the details on bulk creation of users in Azure Active Directory. Coming back to the question, if you will scroll down a little bit more, you can find more questions based on the case studies that we just went through. Friends, it's a great documentation and I must thanks Microsoft for bringing this up. It's really helpful for anyone preparing AZ-104. So hopefully you got a lot of valuable information on AZ-104 including a hands-on example of case studies. More case studies and updated questions on AZ-104 are coming soon. So please do not forget to click that subscribe button and press that bell icon alongside to get the timely notifications of our upcoming videos on Azure certifications. And for those who are new here today, we already have a video on AZ-104 with 190 questions and I just mentioned more are coming up. Not only that, we also have one of the biggest question pools available on AZ-900, a total of 326 questions. More than 240,000 people have already watched these two videos and benefited out of them. Similarly, we have questions and answers series on DP900, AI900 and recently added DP203. And not to forget, we have recently started a full course series on Azure Fundamentals, a sure shot gateway for anyone to Azure Cloud. And friends, please note that for all the question and answer series, you can get a free PDF file containing all the questions and answers. Details on how to get these PDF files are shared in the respective videos. Links to all the above mentioned videos are available in the description box. Do watch them, share them with everyone who wants to onboard on Azure Cloud. That was all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.